This video was sponsored by Brilliant.org. Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Cold Fusion. Last week, we took a look at electric flying cars and the problems that still need to be solved. Then we took a look at electric aircraft in general. But today, we'll be doing a bit of a fun episode. We're going to take a look at some of the more creative applications of neural networks, as well as some concerns. The idea for this episode came to me while I was browsing Twitter. I came across some work by Justin Pinkney and Doran Adler. Their project turns any photo of a person into a Disney Pixar looking cartoon. I immediately saw potential for such software, and I think it could be a hit if they could polish it and implement it into some kind of app. And I just thought it was cool. So I reached out to Justin and we had a discussion about many things, and I'll include portions of the chat here. Let's get into it. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. So first, a bit of background. The current generation of neural networks is fairly new, only being born in 2012. And in that time, we've already seen them change the world. Before 2012, the computer science community thought that neural networks were a waste of time. Then, a man by the name of Jeffrey Hinton showed them all wrong. I have a full episode on that story if you're interested. Though one of the most recent impactful developments and what we'll be talking about today is the concept of a generative adversarial network, or GAN for short. Invented by Ian Goodfellow in 2014, GANs are thought to be the closest thing that AI has to creativity. And then today, one of the you know, things that's really taken the deep learning world by storm is your invention of GANs. So how did you come up with that? GANs are a way of doing generative modeling where you have a lot of training data and you'd like to learn to produce more examples that resemble the training data, but, but they're imaginary. They've never been seen exactly in that form before. When I was arguing about generative models with my friends in a bar, something clicked into place and I started telling them, you need to do this, this, and this, and I swear it'll work. And my, my friends didn't believe me that it would work, but I believed strongly enough that it would work that I went home and coded it up the same night and it worked. So it took you one evening to implement the first version of GANs. I... It, I implemented it around midnight after going home from the bar where my friend had his going away party. So how does a GAN work? Basically, it's a pair of neural networks that compete against each other by trying to fool each other, and they both get better in the process. There are two parts to a GAN, a discriminator and a generator. Let's take image generation as an example. The discriminator learns to tell real images apart from fake images created by the generator. At the same time, the generator uses the information from the discriminator to learn how to produce images that the discriminator is not able to distinguish from actual images. Both neural networks learn together and get stronger throughout the training. The training usually finishes when the discriminator classifies a fake image as a real one. Justin explains further. The thing that's discerning between the real and the fake images keeps on improving and improving. And in doing so, it helps the generator to improve because it's pointing out what, what the flaws in the images are that, it's gener that are being generated. And that helps the generator to improve those. As you can probably imagine, this is a pretty powerful concept. In the AI space, anything to do with creating and not just simply recognizing and predicting is probably using a GAN. And recently, many tools have become readily available, so there's been massive developments in accessibility. So let's take a look at some applications. To get you up to speed, here's a few things that GANs can do. We've covered some of this previously, but many of you are new here. GANs can do things like animating the Mona Lisa. And a more recent example includes turning line drawings into people. This was recently covered by the YouTube channel Two Minute Papers. How about a GAN that estimates what Roman emperors probably looked like 2,000 years ago just from their statues? A very interesting tool for historians, I'd imagine. Interpolating choppy footage into high-speed slow motion is also a common use. They can also enhance grainy or low-resolution footage to 4K with high frame rates. Check out these enhanced videos from the turn of the century. Absolutely amazing, and I think this is a great use for such technology. GANs can also reconstruct 3D models of objects from images. Or, how about reconstructing an image of a person's face just by listening to their voice? In medicine, GANs have also been used to generate new molecules for a variety of protein targets associated with cancer, inflammation, and fibrosis. 
In 2019, these GAN-generated molecules were validated experimentally in mice. I'm not sure if this next one is a GAN, but it is very interesting nonetheless. A neural network called Jukebox by OpenAI can generate songs that don't exist. You give it a portion of a song, and it's going to try and make up the rest, with some interesting results. A key moment for GANs in the general public came from NVIDIA in December of 2018. It was called Style GAN. It was a leap forward in image generation, and moreover, it was accessible. In February 2019, Uber engineer Philip Wang used the software to create thispersondoesnotexist.com. He himself was amazed and stated that it was impressive that StyleGAN could, quote, pick apart all the relevant details of human faces and recompose them in a way that's coherent, end quote. And I think that's objectively true. You can try it for yourself at thispersondoesnotexist.com. Every time you refresh it, you get a new picture of a non-existing person. In February of 2019, StyleGAN 2 was released, and it came with higher resolution and less artifacts. Out of StyleGAN 2 came our main story for today, a concept with the working title, Tunification. The idea is that you can upload or take a photo of yourself or someone else, and the AI will create a Disney Pixar version. Let's take a look at some behind the scenes work that Justin has been involved with while developing Tunify. What we made in the end was this kind of tunification, which was to take a, you know, a real picture of a face and kind of give it the characteristics of you know, something that you might see in a Disney or Pixar animated film. So, you know, like bigger eyes and smaller chin and like flamboyant hair and that sort of stuff. Um, and that's kind of the, yeah, it's, it's that sort of moving beyond the basics of GANs because, you know, normally GANs just generate images you know, from an existing data set, but there's no existing data set of like photorealistic versions of Disney characters. You know, This is something that's a little bit in between a Disney character and a, a photo of someone's face. And so that somewhere in between is you know, normally quite a hard thing to achieve um, with a GAN because it's not really designed to do that. But it's built out of these different layers which address different resolutions in the image. <clears throat> So the lower resolution layers are all in charge of you know, controlling the pose of the head or the overall sh shape. There's like the middle resolution layers, which are like the features like the eyes, the shapes of the eyes and the mouth and the nose. And then the highest resolution layers in there are all in charge of you know, controlling the lighting or the coloring of the image. Um, so because there's this kind of control over the different layers of resolution, then you can actually do a thing where you combine two different models that you've trained. So they have to be linked. Like, and that's what we did for this tunification project. We took um, one model, which is the kind of standard thing, which is the photorealistic face generation model like, that got trained by NVIDIA. And then uh, another model produced from that um, by someone who I met on Twitter called Doran Adler, and then swap some of those layers over. So we take the character model, which gives you the kind of big eyes and the, the shape of the head, which is kind of characteristic, but then preserve the high resolution layers from the photorealistic model so that you know things come out looking looking a bit more like a photo. And those kind of two things combined give you this, this kind of weird, slightly creepy, um, kind of real but not real image, which is sort of in between the two, in between those two things. If you're interested with getting started with neural networks, you may be interested in this episode's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a great online platform and app that allows you to actively learn the maths and science that governs the world around us. They have a few courses on neural networks, everything from the history of the technology to how they work. You can take a quiz at every point in your learning journey. I took a course on the mathematical concept of infinity just for fun, and I found the Brilliant quizzes quite entertaining. So if you're looking to sharpen up your critical thinking or planning on a career change, why not do it in a fun way with Brilliant? To start learning today, go to www.brilliant.org slash coldfusion and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. I asked Justin about what he thought the future of AI or neural networks will look like. He stressed on the point of efficiency, doing more with less. 
training these things with much less data than you need. So, you know, just having thousands of images rather than hundreds of thousands or millions of images. Um, and also making these things you know, more controllable or smaller or more efficient. And all of those things, you know, are useful for people who actually want to try and put these to, to practical uses. Because although the research side, you know, the cutting edge side of things is is really interesting, you know, a lot of those things aren't always necessarily very practical to use on, you know, a, a website or a mobile app. In May of 2020, NVIDIA researchers taught an AI called GameGAN to recreate the game Pac-Man simply by watching it being played. This AI was trained on 50,000 examples of Pac-Man in order to produce a fully functional version of the game without a game engine. This is impressive, but then once you start comparing it to the human brain, it's pretty terrible. For a human, would probably need to watch one or two rounds of playing the game to understand what's happening and subsequently recreate the game. 50,000 examples is way too much. If we could train AIs with very little info, this could be the next big step. Another example is NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling. This can upscale video games, reducing GPU load so games can run at higher frame rates and higher resolution at the same time. Supercomputers to take a lower res image and then intelligently build it up to look like a native higher res so if you're playing at 1080p with DLSS set to performance or quality, then the game is actually running at 540p or 720p respectively, and then intelligently upscaling back up to 1080. For example, at native 1080p, this chain link fence looks a little ragged, but it's obvious what it is. Move to DLSS 2 though, and everything is much clearer. Compared to the native, we've actually gained detail, particularly on the fence and the handrails and we're still up at 77 FPS from the native 43. Though for this, they had to use a supercomputer to train the AI. Later on in our chat, we went onto the topic of deep fakes and the problems that they present. Good evening, my fellow Americans. Fates has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. Yeah, so I think it's a, an interesting thing. And I think the you know, there's a lot of research going into detecting the fakes. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of research into kind of producing ever more realistic images. And my feeling is that those those two things will be kind of competing forever in a, you know, kind of a never ending battle that you know, what will get better for a while and then the detection methods will get better and then the generation methods will get better. And that's probably just going to be the state of play kind of forever. Um, and I don't really think necessarily one is going to win out. And, I, and in that sense, I feel like it's just something that people have to learn to deal with. NVIDIA has a built in method of detecting if an image is real or fake and other companies are building such tools for video as well. In the end, I think we both agreed that it will end up to be something similar to an arms race. So there's been a huge amount of hype and people are really, you know, amazed by some of the results and really blown away by things. But I think it's quite easy to, to get carried away with that and not realize that, that a lot of them are still quite limited or, you know, when you get outside of their sort of domain of expertise, they can fall over really easily that you know, they put too much faith in them and they start to make bad decisions or bad predictions about things. And if you don't really know that, you just have blind faith. I think there's a, you know, there's a big trap of just assuming that it's doing a good job and not really using any of your kind of human intuition or knowledge about, is that really working very well? So that's about it from me. So what do you guys think about neural networks and GANs in particular? What was your favorite application of GANs? Do you think that GAN technology can bring a lot of positives to the world? Or are you more weary of this kind of technology? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks to all of you who supported the channel by buying the first edition merch. You should be receiving your voice messages and music shortly. A standard line of merch is still available. If you'd like to see anything on science, technology, business or history, 
definitely subscribe to Cold Fusion. There's a lot of interesting stuff on here. Next week's video will be on some research of nanoparticles that dissolve plaque in arteries and may stop heart disease. My name is Togogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion. Cheers guys, have a good one.